Hey guys, how's everyone doing? This is Steven. I'm back for another little tutorial. Um, this one is going to be delving into a little bit of the Unreal SDK or Unreal Game Engine and After Effects and some more wonderful After Effects expressions. Um, you're probably wondering uh, what the hell you're looking at. Uh, not too exciting. Very pretty though. Uh, what it is is the uh, very basic and beginning stage to creating an image that could be used for the Unreal 3 game engine or Unreal SDK um, flipbook material application doohickey thingy. Basically what it is is uh, being able to import an image into the Unreal SDK and select an option for flipbook. Uh, what this will do it will take the image and scan from various areas of this image depending on what you set it for and it will create an animated image. Now the thing is in order to create this flipbook what you have to have are your various cells from animation so if you render something from Maya or 3D Max or even After Effects you obviously know that you get images that you know, come out in, sequ in a sequential order, and then you bring them into uh, a post-processing application like After Effects, and it sets up these images. Well, basically, what we're doing here is to set up for the flipbook. We have to have these images laid out side by side um, in a single image. And what the Unreal editor looks at is starting from one image to the next image to the next image, next image, and it creates its own little flipbook rather than one solid anim animation like you would get with Bink, uh, the Bink animation, which is also used in, in uh, Unreal. And I'm going to try and close it up here real quick because I know I'm babbling and people are probably rolling their eyes at this moment. But um, I came up with this idea because I'm using the Unreal SDK for my thesis and I wanted to use some animations for particles. And you cannot use the Bink animation for uh, particles. So I you know, took the animation and worked with the flipbook and tried to do it in, in uh, Photoshop and it was a pain in the ass because you got to bring out the guides and everything and it just became a real mess. Um, so I developed some expressions in After Effects that would basically automate the process and it's a uni uni bunch of universal expressions that can be cut and pasted into um, any image or animation and what it will do it will resize, um, offset your images. So, without further ado, we'll get started on the project. Okay, the first thing we've got to do is we've got to take into consideration um, the actual image size we're going to be using. I'm using going to be using uh, 1024 by 1024. Uh, of course, if you work with Unreal, uh, you know that anything, any image that's imported has to be within the multiples of 2. And you know it'll be you know, 2, 4, 8, 16, up to, you know, 5, 5, uh, was it, 5, 12, 10, 24, 2048. Um, so I'm sticking with a 1024 by 1024 square. Now the thing is, the square has to be divided evenly, horizontal and vertical, or through its width and it's through its height. So it has to be, I guess you could say, squared. Um, and what square is, a uh, square number is a number that is the outcome of a number being multiplied by itself. So basically, uh, squaring 1, 1 times 1 equals 1, 2 times 2 equals 4, 3 times 3 equals 9, 4 times 4 equals 16. If you want to reverse it, the square root of 16 is 4, square root of 3 is, a uh, square root of 9 is 3, square root of 4 is 2. Now if you take a look at our boxes here, we have, this would be 25 boxes, square root of 25 is 5. Got 5 boxes going across and 5 boxes going up and down. <clears throat> so when you create your animation, you have to take this into consideration when you set up the amount of frames that you're going to be animating in. You, they have to end up being a square number. So in this case, I use 25. Um, you can use 36, you can use 49, whatever square number you want to use, that's fine. But it has to be a square number. So what I have here is I created a small animation <coughs> inside After Effects. And basically what this is, is represented, re representing um, a, another animation I had maybe done in, in uh, Maya and rendered out 
or done in After Effects and rendered out. And I'm just bringing the opposite, the, the the separate images into After Effects to create the animation. And this is all this represents. And all the animation is is just a solid, and it's got hue and saturation. I animated the 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 hue, so as we go down the animation, you can see the, the different color changes. And it'll be obvious why I'm doing this in a second. Well, not a second, in a few minutes. Um, but the problem is, let's just say when we've rendered out this animation, uh, we didn't take into consideration what we were doing, and the animation ran rendered out at 800 by 800. Which, yeah, it's square, but the problem with this is it's not 1024 by 1024. Um, and I was smart. I uh, rendered it out 36 frames, and you're saying seeing the duration, and you're like, well, that's not 36. Well, yes, it is. At uh, 25 frames per second, one second, 25 plus 11 frames is 36. Um, <clears throat> and in order, if you want to type in, say, prove it 36 frames, type in 36 in the duration. Let's go back. You'll get. A second, uh, one second, eleven frames. Okay, so the problem is, is that we need to reset this so that it's 1024 by 1024. Uh, this actual image here, and um, you'll understand why I'm doing doing this in a second too. I'll explain that in a moment. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the uh, solid layer and I'm going to Control Shift C, create a new composition or pre comp it. Move all attributes, yes, and of course pre comping it, you keep the same size of the object which is 800 by 800. So I'm going to go into composition settings and switch to 1024 by 1024 and of course leave leave the duration the same. So now we have this black frame going around our solid. Okay, so let's fix that. So select our, sol our, our composition, hit S for scale and then alt click the stopwatch to get our expressions editor. And we'll open this up a little bit. Just Shift everything around. Um, now, the thing is, what we have to do here is we have an equation that will allow us to find the difference between the actual solid here and the size of this composition. So, we have to figure that out. Now, what I'm going to go over here is I'm going to start out. This is just me. Uh, I'm going to start out by writing some variables and separating out my x and y values, which I usually do with any you know any of my expressions. I start out like this. Okay, so and let's go down and bracket x, y, um, and up here we're just going to I'm going to type value bracket zero don't forget the semicolon and value bracket one semicolon again and basically what value is is saying okay the value which is scale zero which in the array value zero is your x value value one is your y value or you can just there's so many ways to do this you know select that area pick with the x value Pick with the y value, or you can just leave it, type it in scale bracket one and scale bracket zero, or if you're incredibly lazy, you can just type in bracket zero and bracket one. Um, so, sorry, I just had to go through it because it's insane how many ways you can actually do this. So, let me just go back to value. Value. Okay, so we have this set. One of the reasons why I do this here is so if I accidentally type anything wrong up here and I select out of it, I'm not going to get an error and it shuts down my expressions and it get, gets a mess. Okay, so I'm going to set up some more variables. Variables. Now, first set is TCW and TCH, and these are just my variables. You can write whatever you want. Basically, TC, TCW stands for this co this composition width. And TCH stands for this composition height. And uh, the next set of va variables is going to be OCW and OCH, which stands for original comp width and original comp height. And uh, for the 